<laughs> All right, good morning again, everyone. Good morning. Can everybody in the back hear me? I know this is a sound system. Everybody, can somebody give me the thumbs up in the back if you can hear me? Can you hear me in the back of the room? Yes, okay, I got a thumbs up, thank you. All right, well, welcome to Blue Ridge Community College on a Sunday, which usually doesn't happen, but it's a unbelievably fa uh, wonderful celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Veterinary Technology Program here at Blue Ridge Community College, so thank you for coming. <laughs> We're thrilled at Blue Ridge Community College to have hosted the fall conference of the Virginia Association of Licensed Veterinary Technicians here yesterday. And so we uh, determined that this event in celebration of our 50th anniversary of the program would be a gr good uh, piggyback to the end of that conference. But we always love hosting that conference. Our veterinarian technicians at the college often are leaders of that association and have been for many years. And so uh, uh, it's a privilege to have all of the graduates of Blue Ridge Community College back on campus. Some of you, I understand, are back on campus for the first time uh, since leaving here many, many years ago. So that's just not right. We want to bring you back more often. And uh, just delighted that you're here today and hopefully catching up on old friendships and uh, remembering, uh, as you see some of the changes we've made, also appreciating that all of those changes and all of the things we were able to build this program into, the success that it enjoys, was built on years and years and years of people in this room who made sacrifices to make it a better program, who graduated from the program and went out into the profession and made a difference in the lives of uh, so many animals and their families. And so uh, really appreciate everybody being here celebrating this great event with us today. I'd like to introduce our current Blue Ridge Community College veterinary technology employees, and I want them to stand and remain standing as we recognize them. And I'll start with our program director, Dr. Brett Van Leer, if you would stand. <laughs> Veterinarians, Dr. Wynn DeGrassi. Dr. Virginia Fint. And Dr. Brad Good. We're also privileged to have one of our adjunct faculty members here today, an advisory committee member and Blue Ridge Community College graduate, Chris Stefanak, LVT. Michelle Walt is our uh, administrative assistant for the program. And then today, in a special way, we want to celebrate our outstanding licensed veterinary technicians who are here, saving the best for last. <laughs> Stephanie Atkins. Evan Carpenter. Gail Foley. Chris Keen. Lisa Polk. And Katie Simpson. Thank you all for being here, and uh, this is the uh, group that is running the program now and doing an outstanding job keeping it state-of-the-art uh, for the next generation of LVTs in our community, so thank them all. I'd like to take a moment to honor and um, recognize all of the former veterinary technology employees that are here today. So if you worked in the um, veterinary technology program at Blue Ridge Community College and you've since moved on to other pastures, uh, would you stand and be recognized? I know we had Dr. Porter here, Sandy Martin. Sandy.
having been here myself 30 years, I can assure you that the program would not be where it is today if it wasn't for them caring so much about the program and building it into the reputation that it has. It, it's the, uh, not only the best program in the Commonwealth of Virginia, but the best program in the country and is recognized as such. And so I want to thank their contribution and the hours and hours of hard work along with our uh, current employees as well. I'd like to recognize our corporate sponsors who made today possible. So our event sponsors are Harrisonburg Animal Hospital and Sycamore Veterinary Hospital. Are there representatives from our event sponsors here today? If you would, would you stand? Thank you so much. Uh, our diamond sponsors, if you would stand, Cave Spring Veterinary Clinic and Veterinary Surgical Centers. Our gold sponsors are Merck Animal Health, Mountain View Equine Hospital, Wildlife Center of Virginia. Uh, also Heartland Veterinary Clinic, Maple Lane Veterinary Clinic, Shenandoah Animal Hospital, and Zoetis. So if any of you are here today, would you please stand and be recognized? It's donors like these sponsors and other donors in our community that have made such a difference for this program. You know, one of the hardest challenges we have in the Commonwealth is keeping all of our career and technical programs state of the art so that when we're graduating our uh, students, they're going out and understanding the newest technology, the newest equipment, the newest research that is out there. And the state gives us some resources to support that, but without our donors, there's no way we could have the type of state-of-the-art equipment that all of you saw today as you went on your tour. So really proud of all that we've been able to do, stewarding the money that many of you have given um, I'm really proud of all of the sponsors who gave in honor of the veterinary technicians that work at their practice. So many of you may not know that uh, we asked veterinarian uh, practices to give $50 for every one of the graduates who works at their center, and we got thousands and thousands of dollars from that effort. And uh, here at Blue Ridge Community College, we also contributed on behalf of our excellent LVTs that work in our program. So. Thank you very much to all our donors and sponsors. The bronze sponsors are located at the very back of the program, second to the last page. So uh, make sure you take a look at those as well and thank them for their sponsorships. Now I'm thrilled to introduce our program director, Dr. Brett Van Leer, a graduate of the Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine at Virginia Tech. Dr. Van Leer worked in a small animal practice before joining the Blue Ridge Community College Vet Tech Department in 2001. Seems like only yesterday, doesn't it, Brett? <laughs> it was just a short time later in 2014, uh, upon Dr. Stuart Porter's retirement, that Brett became the director of the program. So we're so grateful for Dr. Van Leer's leadership of the program, uh, the passion and philosophy with which he administers it, and the teamwork approach that all of the veterinarians and LVTs use in approaching the next generation of education for um, licensed veterinary technologists. So with that, I'll introduce you to Dr. Brett Van Leer. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me in the back okay. Is that the case? Yes? Okay, lovely. Um, wow, what a remarkable event today. And, and honestly, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by it all, uh, but, I, but I feel so privileged um, to be here, to be a part of this event today, uh, to have been a part of this program and look forward to continue being a part of this program for a long time to come. Um, I would also like to echo uh, Dr. Downey's um, remarks about thanking our sponsors and all of the contributors <clears throat> to the college and to our program. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for attending this event today. 
Uh, it's so nice to, to see such a uh, well-represented uh, group of individuals from across the, across the years. Uh, and I'd also actually like to make sure that we thank um, all of the organizers for this event. So countless hours were, were put in by our program faculty and staff, um, none of which were done by me, <laughs> to, to, to organize this event today. Uh, and, and we are extremely grateful for the efforts um, in getting this event organized. So I'll have a few more comments at the, at the end of the program, but what I'd like to do at this point is to uh, ask uh, Dr. Stuart Porter and Chris Keene uh, to come up front, uh, not, neither of which probably requires any introduction at all um, to, to everyone in this room, but of course, uh, doc, Dr. Stuart Porter, who uh, was at the, the helm for the better part of 42 years uh, for the program from 1972 to 2014. Thank you, okay. Fair enough. And, and, also, and also Chris Keene, who enrolled in the uh, second class uh, in 1973 and is a 1975 graduate of the program. And then interestingly enough, she and I started here in 2001 on the same day. Uh, so we've, we've been here together ever since. Okay, we were told to mic check every time we stay and every time we come up here. So, we good still? Okay, good. Um, so between Stuart and I, we have covered all but two years of the 50 years that the program has been here. So I, I started here as a student in 1973. I was three years old in case anybody's doing <laughs> now. Um, and, and, Stuart, and I left in 75, and Stuart started in 77. So neither one of us were here in 72 or 76, but beyond that, we got it covered. So, uh, so we thought we would share with you some of our perspectives on the history of the program uh, since we've been here for most of it. So we had pretty humble beginnings in, in 72 um, when, when Sandy Martin and I were students here together uh, in, in those early years. Uh, we had a single lab that was a makeshift garage turned into a lab. And oh, by the way, there was a little bit of a surgical suite in there, if you could really call it that. Um, and then um, a little Quonset hut thing that was kennels for dogs and cats in the same room. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Not happy kitties at all. Um, and, and a lot of the progress that's been made over the years, I think most people will agree, that Blue Ridge has led the way. We were the first program in the state, one of the first in the country, and, um, and, and people um, that started the program really made a, a, a high bar, and we've tried to maintain that bar ever since. And so, you know, while the pro progression has evolved, there's a lot of things that have changed, but there's also some things that have remained the same. And so we would like to go over some of those things with you today. So for changes, I will turn over to Stuart. It's, it's stunning to me how much the program has changed and grown and, and coming back here and seeing all you people here has brought back an awful lot of memories. As Chris said, it started in very, very humble beginnings. And when I came in 77, they were over in what's called B building, which most people call the vet tech prep building, except for the auto people. <laughs> and, That's all one name. And we had a we had a single laboratory and uh, you know a few offices and our clinic area. Our, t our technician uh, desk was right next to the X-ray machine. And then um, we started to grow, and the the building that's the brown building that's right next to the uh, B building was built supposedly as, well, supposedly as a large animal uh, building. And, um, it, and we did get horses in there every once in a while, even a cow, I think, once or twice. But um, ultimately, uh, we, we kept growing. And B building's been enlarged and renovated twice. Um, we got a uh, dedicated uh, distance education classroom back in 19, uh, 1996 which I still think we're the only program that uses. And um, it's just been incredible. And, and a lot of that is due to the, the cooperation 
of uh, the college um, working with the state system, which is not easy, to, uh, to get these things done. And uh, they've been very cooperative. And you know, the last thing we got was the, uh, the Bowman Barn, thanks to uh, private contributions, which some of you have seen out in, the, out in the pasture, which I should point out, when I came here, the plan was to move the whole vet tick program out there. And uh, it just never came to pass. Okay. Let's do it. So another thing that's really changed a lot has, has been um, anesthesia and, and monitoring. Um, anybody else in here remember halothane and metaphane? Yeah, these are my people. Yeah, thank God they're gone, right? Right. Um, so we've really, the drugs and the, the anesthetic agents have certainly changed over the years, as well as the monitoring equipment. We started out monitoring with our hands and our eyes and paying attention and hoping for the best and you know, trying to be very preemptive in, in caring for our patients. And the cool thing is we still do those things, but we also have more information from these advanced monitors that give us way more information that in, um, helps ensure our patient's safety. So we're pretty excited um, about that. One of the important things that veterinary technicians do is laboratory work, and since I taught those courses, that was particularly important to me. And we've gone through thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, of different laboratory uh, machines. Many of you might remember the Coulter counter, or even worse, the QVCV. And, uh, and, and you know, now we have machines that will do accurate CBCs, and, and in, you know, literally in minutes, Blood chemistry, some of you may remember the serometer. It took three hours to do an SGPT. Um, again, now these things can be done in, in, a, matter, in a matter of minutes. And those, those, that equipment costs money, and so does the testing, the test kits that, that go with it. But again, the college has been very cooperative in providing us with the funds to do all of that. Anybody that knows me probably knows that I kind of like dentistry a little bit. <laughs> and that's one of the things that has really evolved um, really in the last 25 years or so. Um, and and I'm, I'm proud to say Blue Ridge has really kept up with that. Uh, when I first started, we literally hand scaled only. There was no ultrasonic scaler. And I won't say the brand name of the abrasive that we used with a toothbrush to polish. It was primitive, and you used it to clean your bathroom as well. Um, and so we have definitely graduated from that with ultrasonic scalers and high-speed equipment and, you know, who doesn't love an air water syringe and a, and a drill and, and fun things like that. So we've, we've definitely come a long way. Um, digital dental radiography changed the world. Um, speaking of radiography, Again, when we started, we had a traditional x-ray machine, uh, like most veterinary hospitals, and um, did wet developing, which was uh, time consuming. And then, thanks again to private donations, we got, I believe it was one of the first uh, direct digital x-ray machines in the, uh, in the state, and all of a sudden, our world changed. And uh, the, the, our ability to uh, get wonderful images very quickly um, just opened up a whole new world for us and for our students, and we didn't have to deal with those chemicals anymore. Lasers. <laughs> Do I need to say any more? Who would have ever thought in 1972 that we would be using surgical lasers on a daily basis and doing therapeutics and pain control with lasers? That's it. <laughs> I mean... Probably one of, the, one of the, the biggest changes that's happened, at least from an instructor's point of view, is how we do instruction. Um, when I came here, we had mimeograph machines. Students had mimeograph notes and mimeograph tests, and some of you probably don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, and we were on a 10-week quarter system. So each, you had these individual courses, um, and they changed every 10 weeks, which was sort of convenient for putting things in nice little blocks, but then the whole community college system changed to semesters. And we had one summer to convert everything that we've been doing in 10-week blocks into 15-week semesters. 
and courses had to be collapsed and, and, and reconfigured and, and, um, and, and really created. We created some, some new courses. Um, we used to use, um, I used to use 35 millimeter slides. I'm sure some of my, uh, the graduates here remember my 35 millimeter slides. And um, then all of a sudden, you know, computers came on and, and PowerPoint and everything got digitalized. I still have those slides, by the way, but um, <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to throw them away. But anyway, um, most of the, the good ones I digitalized, we used to take pictures through the microscope. So we had a, a whole collection of uh, photomicrographs. Um, we got to the point where we were doing, um, uh, we'd hand the students beginning of each class a big thick notebook with all the, all the notes for the whole, the whole, the whole course. And uh, then when we got to the point where we were actually recording the course. Some of the old people will be sad about this. But we literally <laughs> recorded every class, um, not just audio, but v video. So that students could, uh, on the internet, could go there and, uh, and review it. And uh, I think a lot of them probably did. We had a computerized platform like uh, Blackboard on campus. And then I think it's changed to something so called Canvas once I left. Um, <laughs> Thanks to the increasing demand for veterinary technicians in the more populated uh, part of the state, we uh, established a veterinary uh, distance education program back in 1996, thanks to uh, the support of Dr. Perkins and, um, and the state. And uh, we set up sites around the state. We started with uh, Virginia Beach. In fact, uh, one of our Virginia Beach students I ran into when I got here. And then we spread to uh, Virginia Western and John Tyler and Thomas Nelson and finally Germanic Community College. And then as time went on and Zoom came along, uh, that whole switched over to a Zoom type uh, uh, program where students didn't have to go to a specific community college but could be wherever they wanted to be with their computers and, and take a class simultaneously. It's just, and it was very good uh, practice for uh, COVID. <laughs> yes, we are grateful that we um, already knew all about Zoom before the pandemic. Uh, so other changes that have occurred in, um, in vet medicine as well. Um, anybody remember the first leukemia test for cats? Two and a half hours to run that test. That's now a snap test that you, know, you have results in, what, eight minutes. Um, but that was, uh, we didn't even know, when I was a student here, we didn't even know feline leukemia was a thing, let alone that it was caused by a virus and we could test for it and you know, manage those cases. So that's changed a lot. Probably the, one, the, the thing that we didn't know about when I was a student that kind of changed my career was canine parvovirus. Um, any of you that were out there in the field during those early months and years of canine parvovirus uh, know that we got to use every skill we ever were taught and then some managing babies with severe diarrhea and some with heart disease. And I would literally spend the entire day going through the wards of all these hospitalized animals, three wards of patients um, in my little clinic in Harrisonburg, and all I did all day long was take care of parvo puppies. And um, a lot of them died. It was hard, it was really hard. Um, but I think technicians kind of came into their own in, in that era, and, um, and it's something that I will never forget. Yeah, Parvo was uh, sort of similar to COVID in that we didn't have vaccines and we didn't know what we were dealing with initially, and it spread so rapidly amongst the dog population across the country. It's not nearly as common now. It's not nearly as common now as it used to be. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about administration, although it, in the book, in the in your um, booklet, it, it talks about um, we had four presidents from the time I got here um, until I left. Dr. Downey is still here, and I remember when Dr. Downey came and he was the counselor for the program, and he, he worked very hard to help our students. The program is demanding, and he worked very hard to, uh, to help our students. But we were fortunate that every president we had, from Dr. Downey to Dr. Sears to Dr. P Perkins, or Dr. Armstrong was first, um, just w was very supportive of the program. Uh, Dr. Armstrong, who is the president who hired me when I came, actually taught parasitology in our program. 
And uh, some of you probably remember his lectures. He was very, very, very detailed. <laughs> I had Dr. Armstrong. <laughs> and I did graduate. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, so the, the class that, uh, the second class that I was in, um, we had Dr. Allison, who was the, the very first program director. He was on the VVMA committee that was looking into starting a vet tech program and then brought that, that knowledge and, and support of the idea uh, and started the program. And he was here for two years and, um, and certainly got us, uh, got us going. Uh, but Dr. Porter here is the one that really put us on the map. Um, probably uh, one of the biggest uh, influences in the profession in Virginia. Um, he and Sandy Martin, say hi Sandy. Sandy was here for a very, very long time as well and the teamwork that they, um, that they put together many, much of that time was just the two of them or, and a bunch of adjuncts or um, you know, one other faculty member. And um, man, they, they kept the bar high. They maintained high standards for patient care. Um, Sandy did not let a single animal go neglected for a minute the entire time she was here. And, um, and that, we, we try to live up to that standard every day. So thank you, Sandy, for, for that contribution. <laughs> and Stuart has not only been uh, uh, an amazing program director, but really an influence in the utilization of technicians across the state and educating veterinarians on what vet, te vet techs are and, and what we can do and what we should be doing. And, and certainly Dr. Van Leer has carried that torch uh, for the last eight years. Um, also a shout out to, um, to Dr. Donna Hastings. Donna retired last year after, I think it was 26 years, it was a long time. And we still feel Donna's influence here every day, and so want to thank her for her contribution. Um, <laughs> often, and and many others uh, uh, since then, and um, and certainly the the people that that John has recognized, um, the LVTs. Um, have just always been a, a stellar group of people to emulate what a technician can and should be uh, to our students and, and you know, throughout the state as well. Um, and also a big shout out to Katie Melton Simpson. Katie was, uh, has been a technician with the program for five years? Okay, this is her fifth year, but she, Katie is the very first faculty member technician in the program. So it only took us 50 years, but we're super proud to have a technician teaching technicians how to be technicians. We think that's a pretty cool concept. Um, and also big shout out to our um, program administrators. I'm sure many of you will remember Catherine Rosenberg, who was here for a very long time, a couple different times, and Sandra Hatcher and, and then Michelle. Don't know what we would do without you guys. Oops, wait a minute. I think I lost. Nope. Okay. Sorry. I got ahead of myself. There's always been really good demand for the program and, and actually great demand for our graduates, for which, of course, that makes us very happy. I mean, it was not unusual for us to have 100% employment. And um, a number of people you know, made incredible contributions um, to the veterinary technician field, the veterinary field, but also other related fields, um, research, teaching, industry, uh, zoos. One of our graduates just retired after 40 years at the Memphis Zoo, which is the zoo I used to work at. Um, so they, they've really made a, an incredible contribution. Some have gone into the human health field and I've you know, run in nurses, uh, radiology techs, uh, anesthesia techs, lab techs. And again, they're using the same skills that they learned here at, uh, at Blue Ridge. Um, the, the people that we've been getting, we get a lot of our, some of our, well, many of our students have been right out of high school, but we also get people that have been to college or college graduates, and we've even had people that have advanced degrees. Um, master's degrees and um, 
Uh, we had a graphics designer at one point. Uh, we had a, a girl, who, a lady who worked on Wall Street. Many of our students had children when they were here. Um, they were married or unmarried. Um, but again, being a single mother going through an uh, intense program like this, um, I, give them, I give them an awful lot of credit. Many of our students were working. I remember one student who I've seen here used to work all night and then come to class and struggled to, uh, to stay awake, but she still got straight A's, so you can't argue with that. Um, our results, you know, we're, we're inspected and accredited by a number of different organizations, the American Veterinary Medical Association, the Board of Health Professions, the DEA, uh, the Board of uh, Pharmacy, Radiological Health, and, you know, um, yeah, I mean, we answer to a lot of people. And, of course, we have to jump up to, you know, whatever new regulations they, uh, they come up with. But our graduates have done really well. Our, our passing rate on the national vet tech exam uh, typically averages 96%, uh, uh, where the national average is 66%. And uh, very often, many years, we have 100% pass rate. And uh, you can't argue with that. I, we used to go to meetings of our vet tech uh, educator association, and they were amazed at uh, our results. And you know, they were happy if they get 70% passing. And uh, you know that would not that would not work for us. And again, that's that's a credit to the the veterinarians and the technicians that worked in this program that, as Chris said, held them to uh, held it to a very very high standard. Um, some of our graduates have gone on to veterinary school. Um, one of our graduates is a PhD teaching up at uh, James Madison uh, University. Uh, another uh, got her EED and was a director of a program out in uh, in Colorado. So, uh, like I say, they're, they're, they, they have used their knowledge here to go out and do good in the world. Okay. Um, I also wanted to, to give a little shout out to um, affiliate groups that have um, enhanced our program over the years. Uh, we have um, many local farmers and producers that have allowed our students to come um, do field trips for decades and and that is is such an enhancement and and such a memorable thing you'll notice on the uh, on the slideshow there are lots of pictures on farms with lambs and calves and other cute little critters um, so we do really appreciate that also the affiliation that we've had over the years with the Virginia Wildlife Center I'm sorry Wildlife Center of Virginia and, um, and also Canine Caring Companions uh, has, has been uh, super supportive of the program over the years. And, and no discussion of our program would be complete without um, a, a good nod to the uh, Blue Ridge Educational Foundation funding for equipment that we've talked about, but also funding for, um, for renovations to, to labs and, and whole buildings and, and that sort of thing, but also funding professional development for the faculty and staff. Uh, many grants, we've had many, many grants, and uh, Dr. Good and I just did a, a big strategic innovations grant um, that we are finishing up on. But I'd, I'd like to ask anybody in the audience that has benefited from a scholarship while they were a student here at Blue Ridge. Just raise your hand. Yeah. yeah that, that is a, a big reflection of the impact that the, um, that the foundation has had, and we thank you very much for that. So just to wrap up kind of quickly, I think the students have, um, have been the thing that probably had one of the longest lasting impressions on the program. Um, and and the, that student body, as, as Stuart said, has changed a lot over the years. We used to come right out of high school and do this. Um, now we occasionally have a student right out of high school. Our students used to be full-time students and now they're part-time students and full-time workers or some mix of that and and that creates way new challenges for them as well and they do it because of their passion for this profession you know the the coin answer for why you want to be a vet tech is because you love animals but some of us feel that in our souls and um and that's what brings them here but hard work and grit is what gets them through this program and um, oh, 
I'm gonna get a little emotional about this. <laughs> the other thing that I think is really cool about our students is the lifelong friendships that are formed in this program. Now some have, cons have uh, remarked over the years that it's sort of like being at war with, in war with somebody, um, you know, that you've survived the same battles and, and you know, survival is a huge thing. Um, but most of my friends are fellow vet techs or people that have been through the program with me even though they're not vet techs. Um, and it's just so great to see um, everybody else experiencing that as well and, and making some connections today that we haven't made for many, many years. So I think that's a pretty cool thing. Um, so I'm going to let you give your closing remarks and then closing I'll give remarks. mine. <laughs> well, I mean, again, I, I, I thank the, uh, the school and the sponsors for creating this event. Um, I'm just dazzled by all the people who came in, all the, the blasts from the past, if you will and all the, the support from the industry and the uh, community. Um, it's been a great ride. You know, I did 37 years here, not what I thought I would do when I came, but the college uh, gave us the support and the, the other people who uh, you know, donated or uh, supported us, the veterinarians in the field and our graduates in the field, um, helped make this a, a very, very successful program. And, I'm hoping that, I don't think I'll make the 100 year uh, anniversary, but. Um, I'll give them your regards. So, <laughs> hopefully hopefully some, of, some of you will. Thank you very much. So yeah, so just to wrap up real quick, um, I made a choice to become a veterinary technician when my, both me and the program were very young. Um, I can honestly say that there have been few days in my 47-year career that I regretted that decision. There have been a few. Um, it's hard work. It's often very emotional. It's physically demanding. But it leaves a place in your heart that's very, very warm. Um, it's stimulating intellectually. It is exciting and never boring. Um, I've met some incredible people along the way, and since coming back to BRCC um, in 2001, I've found great joy in helping shape the future of the profession and um, instilling high standards of patient care and professionalism. And while we move forward, I ask you to not forget the past. There are many, many lessons in the past as well as in the future. And um, one of the things that I learned very early in my career was to never stop learning. And, and I think that's probably the biggest gift I got from Blue Ridge, besides the friends. Thank you very much, Chris and Stuart. Um, wow, two, two very special individuals to, to the program and, and to me as well. Um, at this point, I'd like to invite uh, Lynn Reams and Siobhan Jones and Lydia Poland up to the front table. They're going to engage with us in a little panel discussion. There's an open mic, Siobhan, so carry over the Okay, so we have, we have three individuals that are uh, joining us today just to kind of share some remarks about their experiences with the, with the program. Uh, I'm going to allow each one of the three of them to introduce themselves uh, initially, and then we'll move on with a, we'll move on with a few questions. So. Go ahead, Lydia. Okay. <laughs> Is this on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Lydia Poland. I am a 2019 grad, um, and I am currently at Virginia Tech in the ICU. Hi, my name is Siobhan Jones. I am a 2003 grad. I started in 2001 with Chris and Dr. Van Leer, and I've had a very varied career. Uh, right now, what I'm doing is my own business. For pet care. Uh, my name is Lynn Reams. I have absolutely no educational. Close to the amount. 
Oh, I have no educational affiliation except for just wanting to be a part of the community and, and provide learning scholarships for, for the school. That this has been probably the greatest experience I've ever had in my life. Could you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think they got it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Th thank you. Thank you to the three of you. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a question for our, uh, two of our previous students uh, with Lydia and Siobhan. And uh, if each of you would just tell us a little bit about the, the path that led you to our program here at Blue Ridge um, and then uh, where that has taken you from there. Um, so, like I said, I'm an older uh, Blue Ridge grad, not as old as Chris though. <laughs> Love you, Chris. Um, I have a degree in animal and vet science from WVU and had every intention to go to vet school, got into vet school, moved to Virginia from Pennsylvania, got into Penn vet school and was trying to decide what to do. We ended up moving here um, and I was working at Massanut and Animal Clinic and Chris was there and we were talking about things that I wanted to do. And at that time, I thought that we couldn't have a family and I needed something that would give me that fulfillment every day um, in my life. And she said, come to Blue Ridge with me. So I applied to Blue Ridge. Um, one of the things that I heard a lot, and I imagine that most of you have heard, but I hope that you hear it differently. I heard, why are you here if you got into vet school? Like, why didn't you go to vet school? I wanted to go to vet school. Somebody else, this was a stepping stone to vet school. I hope that in your careers, you realize that there does not have to be a second step. Being a technician is amazing. Being a technician is more than enough. And let's face it, no vet would be a vet without a technician. Um, since I've been doing that, I have worked in emergency, I have worked in small businesses, I have worked in corporate. I, a few years ago, got sick and was not able to be a technician anymore in that capacity. And I was a little lost because I needed like that dog and cat therapy. Um, and I just decided to start my own business and most of my clients are now veterinarians. They want me to take care of their pets when they're not home because they know that as a technician, I can express the bladders, I can give the medications, I can tell them if there's something wrong with their pet. So they not only trust me with their pets, but with their clients' pets. And you know, I just want every one of you to know how important your job is and that those friendships that you make with other techs, like, I saw Hope Crosby today and Maria Messerly, and we've worked together, but it has been like 18 years. But they are the people that like, as soon as I saw them, they were the people I wanted to hug. So remember that like, you're enough, this program's enough, and you have everything that you need to make somebody else's life better. Wow, I have to follow that. Um, <laughs> so uh, my path to Blue Ridge was, I guess, a little non-traditional. I did know I wanted to work with animals, thought about vet school, thought about several different things, tried a tiny little stint in human medicine and said, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I um, got into training service dogs with St. Francis Service Dogs, and um, that kind of didn't work out as a career. So I said, hmm, there's this thing called veterinary technology. Maybe if I get a degree in that, that will help me with the service dogs. Um, so I didn't exactly have a passion for vet med, but Blue Ridge did give me that, which I am extremely grateful for. Um, and then uh, during school, I was super involved, fell in love with everything here, everything about vet med. Um, during my externship, fell even more in love with it. Uh, when I graduated, 
I got a um, year-long internship at the University of Tennessee, which was, again, life-changing. Uh, would never have happened without the Ridge. Um, so after I finished that, I went and worked in emergency medicine in Lexington, Kentucky, um, and then ended up, couldn't stay away from Virginia, <laughs> and came back last year to work at Virginia Tech. Um, it's been amazing to me how, you know, I've worked in three different states, two different vet hospitals, um, and everywhere I've worked, there's been a connection with Blue Ridge. So people at the University of Tennessee, new Blue Ridge grads. When I went to Kentucky, their state organization president was a Blue Ridge grad. Um, of course, I work with so many now at Virginia Tech. Um, so the impact is just incredible everywhere, not just in Virginia. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna stick with the two students just for a moment for one additional question. And I'd like for you to just tell us um, what, what you like most about uh, Blue Ridge Community College or the Vet Tech program here, or, or what you feel like uh, differentiates our program from others that uh, you find valuable. Um, I recently had the exciting privilege of going to the AVMA conference in Philadelphia, which is where I live. Um, with Chris and I met Dr. Good. Um, and I think that the thing that I realized now how lucky Blue Ridge is, is the, their driving desire to make everything better. Like Chris and I like were, I just needed my CE. Quite frankly, I've been audited a lot. I just wanted my CE done. Um, but we went to so many conferences on the different tracks for technicians. So she can tell you that, like, maybe go this way, go that way. There's these other opportunities. It's not just one slot that you have to go into. Um, she did take me to a whole lot of dental stuff. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We also did a lot of um, monitoring classes on different like equipment that I haven't even used that she was trying to like learn about for making the student experience better here. Um, we went through the exhibit hall and she hustled and is like trying to get so many things donated here. Um, and it really not only made me so grateful that I made it through this program and learned and benefited from it, but she really made me think, man, if we're moving to Virginia again, I'm gonna be coming to Blue Ridge and I wanna make the program as great for you guys and for future people as she does. And I think you are so lucky, and this program is so lucky to have the people with passions like Sandy and Dr. Hastings and Gail and Dr. Porter and Dr. Van Leer and all the new people that is letting that fire and they want to keep that going. Yeah, so I know it's been mentioned several times, but my favorite part has been the friendships and community. You probably heard the 2019 grad table when we all saw each other. <laughs> um, so I've got some of my very close friends um, from my class. Um, also, I think I still count myself as a baby, baby technician. So having the voices and the mentorship from my teachers, um, I remember my very first practical and I'm like trying to place a catheter and I'm like, I don't know why I'm shaking so much. And Chris just goes, well, you don't have enough oxygen to your brain, so just keep breathing. <laughs> so I, I remember that even when um, I'm placing advanced things in the vet hospital or I'm teaching students, I'm like, just keep breathing. You just need oxygen to your brain. Um, my cat skills I get from Gail, she was just you know, amazing with cats. And um, I've turned into a cat person before, because of her. Um, <laughs> Um, Susan, I don't think it's here. Um, I tell my students all the time, don't run around with Muppet arms. You know, we're in an emergency, but everybody just calm down. <laughs> um, so that has just been carried with me 
through everywhere I've worked and everywhere I've been, I just hear all the voices. Um, I still refer to Dr. Hastings' lecture notes a lot of times when I'm lost with what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, everybody in the program has just stayed with me the whole time. question for Ms. Reams at the end there. Um, if, if you would just, just share with us the story that led you to becoming a supporter of the um, that type of program here at Blue Ridge. Uh, let's see. We moved to Mass Mountain in uh, 1998, built a house. I came from Northern Virginia with seven cats and needed a pet sitter. And Miss Jones happened to be a pet sitter. But she, she worked at Masson Up Vet Clinic. Um, unfortunately, my husband passed away in 2002. And the accountant said that I needed to do something about donating money to a charitable organization or an organization. He suggested James Madison. <laughs> <laughs> Siobhan knows the story, I think, a little bit better about how we got into the, the vet tech program or the scholarships for that. Um, well, I think that you've always been supportive of, of, we had a relationship because I lived in Massanaut and I had seen her cats at the animal hospital. And um, Lynn was an important part of our lives and she was there for my transition from the working world to also working and coming to Blue Ridge and she saw the benefit of Blue Ridge so why would we let James Madison benefit when <laughs> 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 so I you know I, I I did an introduction there is no way that I could have ever foreseen the relationship that would have blossomed between Blue Ridge Vet Tech Program in Lynn, but um, it's amazing, and it's amazing for me to see, and I hope that it's amazing for you to know that all these people are benefiting from you. I don't know if you know, because I didn't know, and we were on a tour. Apparently, Stuart, Tess, and Billy were donated by Lynn. Tess is named after my daughter, Tess. Stuart is, of course, Dr. Porter, and Billy is Lynn's son. So every day when you stick a tube down Stuart, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it has been an amazing association, and um, it's been the best investment I've ever made. Oh. To, uh, back to Lydia. Um, Lydia, as a, as a uh, William Walter Reams Endowed Scholarship recipient, um, just uh, share with us a little how that uh, impacted you as you carried through the program. Ooh, um, <laughs> a lot <laughs> impacted me a lot. Um, I think during school I was able to focus, um, especially in my second year, um, that was so academically strenuous. I didn't have to worry about finances as much. Um, it kind of took that, that out of the equation. Um, and then especially going on to the internship in my first year after I graduated, I made minimum wage <laughs> for a year. Um, so I don't know that that would have been possible and I don't know how my career would be different if I was thinking, well, I can't, I can't possibly pay back my loans and make minimum wage to do this for my career. Um, so yeah, he <laughs> made me where I am today. Very good. Well, I'd, I'd like to ask everybody just to um, thank the, the panel for participating and answering some of our questions here today and sharing their thoughts with you. Same 
thread, um, now I'd like to invite uh, Amy Kiger to the podium to share a few words about the Education Foundation. Well, the good news for all of you is that my speech has pretty much already been given. I had some <laughs> remarks, and Chris gave some of them. Dr. Van Leer has given some of them, so this will be short. But um, I am Amy Kiger, and I am the executive director of the Blue Ridge Community College Educational Foundation. The foundation is the fundraising arm of the college, and so in its simplest terms, we raise money from donors in this community and beyond, and then we use that money to support the college in a wide variety of ways. Um, right now, the foundation has about $16.5 million in um, our investments, which we are really proud of. But I think I'm more proud of the money we don't have in the bank and the money that we have been spending over the years to support a wide variety of things at the college. Um, as Chris mentioned, in terms of vet tech, those things fall into sort of three categories, um, facilities and equipment enhancements that we've done, as well as professional development and support for the employees in the program, and then student scholarships and um, support for our students. And so I was going to give you just a couple examples of each of those things. Um, we are always buying things for vet tech that we don't even understand in our office what they are. So, you know, we, we get a request from Dr. Van Leer or from Stuart Porter back in the day or from Chris, and so we're buying things. We've spent about a quarter of a million dollars over the past 10 years and bought, bought things like um, the hematology analyzer, the ultraclave sterilizer, the acu um, Asculite vet surgical laser system, the canine dental models you just heard about, the urine sediment analyzer, we bought the lift table, the digital imaging system, and on and on. So we are um, really proud of our partnership and proud to be able to support the vet tech program, even though we don't always understand what it is that we're um, buying. But, um, and also in terms of, of the facility renovation, Dr. Porter mentioned this, but when we were able to build the Bowman Large Animal Teaching Facility and then able to renovate the small animal facility and do new flooring and things like that, we've really tried to keep the program um, state of the art so that you're learning on new equipment and the facility itself um, represents the high level that we want it to um, for this program. Over the years, um, in terms of supporting employees, again, as Chris mentioned, the foundation has a competitive grant process every year where we have a $15,000 grant and invite any college employees to um, submit a proposal for consideration for that grant. And last year, Dr. Brad Good and Chris Keene did a very elaborate project on hospital management topics and a real deep dive there. And that was the first time that our foundation has funded a strategic innovation grant that supported the vet tech project. So that was exciting. Uh, we do a smaller grant process every year, our instructional mini grants, and so anyone that's involved with instruction can apply for the grant. And I was kind of flipping back through my notes a week or so ago to, to look at this, and almost every single year since we have started this project, we have awarded a grant to somebody in vet tech. And those have ranged from, again, um, Brad Good, who, who redeveloped the Companion Animal Behavior Course, to Katie Mountain Simpson, who had a grant for developing new canine on or new um, models that were used especially during the COVID pandemic to Gail Foley who did a bovine behavior and pain recognition grant and I have to say her report was the best because when we got her report the front of it had a picture of a cow with an ice pack on his head and a thermometer in his mouth and so um, kudos on the, the grant report for Gail. Um, Chris Keene has written a grant proposal, um, Dr. Van Leer before he was program director and back in the era of going paperless um, wrote a grant proposal that we funded. So, so the support for the program and for the, the folks who are teaching in this program has been wide ranging and has been something that we are very proud of. Um, and finally, student support. That is, that is a huge piece of what the foundation does. We award about $450,000 in scholarships across the college each year. And the scholarship program in Vet Tech has really grown over the past few years. You heard from Mrs. Reams, who has been a huge supporter um, of that program. But we also have the Petersons here. And I'm not going to start naming people, because I will leave somebody out. But we have had very generous um, donors to our scholarship program. And it has made a real difference for our students. So 
Um, I thank you for that and I'm, I was really excited to see how many hands went up to see how many students have or how many graduates have benefited from scholarships. Last year we awarded about $52,000 in scholarships specifically to vet tech students. And this year I'm happy to say in the current year we are awarding over $72,000 in scholarships specifically to vet tech students. So, <laughs> and I'll just close with saying, you know, the foundation is um, not the hero in that story. The donors are the hero in that story. We are just sort of the conduit that makes it happen. But we have been so generously supported by um, people that employ our graduates, people that just care about animals, people that work in the field. Um, we have a new scholarship that was just set up with um, one of your LVT graduates who set up a scholarship endowment. So the range of support that the foundation receives for the vet tech program is varied and we are so appreciative of it. And along those lines, I will tell you about this event. Um, Dr. Downey thanked and recognized our sponsors at the beginning of this event. And they are really what made it, uh, made it possible for all of you all to attend. But beyond the cost of this event, we've actually been doing some fundraising. So I just wanted to celebrate that as a result of this particular event, we have raised $52,619.57. So. So I just wanted to thank again everyone who is a supporter of the foundation, everyone who is a supporter of the Vet Tech program. It is just, it's a real pleasure to, um, to work on your behalf and to benefit the program and the students the way the foundation's able to. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, now I'd like to uh, ask Stephanie Atkins if she'll come forward and she's going to handle the pending portion of the event today. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. This is a pretty big deal. <laughs> 50 years of teaching students how to turn their love for animals into a professional career. That's almost twice as long as I've been alive. It doesn't get much bigger than that. When I graduated from the vet tech program in 2019, the college put on a pinning ceremony for myself and my fellow graduates. This was an event that will, I will always hold very near and dear to my heart. But I have come to find out that this has not always been the case. There are a multitude of Blue Ridge graduates out there who never received a pinning ceremony. Well, today we are seeking to rectify that. Today, we will present all Blue Ridge LVT graduates in attendance with our brand new 50th anniversary pin, which will serve as the new logo for the Vet Tech program for many years to come. I wanted to kind of put a little fun twist on this, so we're gonna play a little game. When I announce your graduation years, please stand and one of our lovely student volunteers, that's y'all's cue, <laughs> will come and present you with your pin, as well as their sincerest thanks and congratulations for all you have done to make this program and this profession what it is today. And then after that, you may be seated and we'll move on to the next series of graduation years. Okay. So, if you have graduated in the last five years, that's the years 2022 to 2017, please stand. Morgan's over there crying. That's me too, just like saying so. If anybody wants to come give me one, that's great, I'll get one. <laughs> oh, they're getting a picture, photo opportunities. Thank you, thank you. Okay, if you have graduated in the last 10 years, that's the years 2016 to 2012, please stand. If 
if you've graduated in the last 15 years, that's the years 2011 to 2007. Please stand. If you've graduated in the last 20 years, that's the years 2006 through 2002. Please stand. If you have graduated in the last 30 years, that's the years 2001 to 1992. Please stand. If you have graduated in the last 40 years, that's the years 1991 to 1982, please stand. Gail is still standing. Did you get a pin? <laughs> they just ignored her. Okay, very good. And lastly, save the best for last, if you have graduated in the last 50 years, that's the years 1981 to 1972. Please stand. Yeah! Now would all graduates in attendance please stand together to be recognized. thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for the impact you have made here. I take it as a personal goal to maintain and grow the legacy you have left behind. You are what makes this program great. I would also like to take a quick moment to recognize our student volunteers. This is our future everyone and I believe it is a very bright one. Once again, thank you to everyone who is here today. I think this just goes to show that we have another 50 years of excellence in front of us. Also, I would like to put in a quick plug while I have the microphone to let everyone know that we have some wonderful dogs here on campus that are looking for their forever home. So if anybody is interested, please come find me later. Oh, and some cats, yes, yes, yes. All right, that is all I have. Thank you so much. Wow, what an extraordinary group of people. Uh, I cannot think of anywhere I would rather be on earth than, than right here with all of you. Um, very sincere with that. Um, so I, I find myself in the same position that, that Amy did earlier. Uh, the, the rest of my work is already done. Um, you know, I, after listening to everyone speak today here, uh, what, what I hope you appreciate is that it really is the collective effort of so many people that makes our program what it is today. And that, you know, that ranges from, from a wonderfully supportive administration, uh, our president, our vice presidents, our deans, uh, other, other departments within the college, our, our IT department, buildings and grounds, 
uh, student services, uh, you know, every aspect of the college is, is really so supportive of our, of our program. Uh, our dedicated faculty and staff, we have a remarkable uh, group of people that are passionate about educating uh, technicians uh, to enter the veterinary profession. Uh, our amazing students, our, our current students, our previous students that, that really make contributions in so many different ways. Uh, even with our existing students serving in roles as, as tutors, work study students, uh, club officers, uh, and, and that list goes on and on in regards to the, the contributions that they, that they make. Uh, all of our community partners, so, you know, as has been highlighted today, we have so many individuals that are, that are generous in donating amazing amounts of money to our educational foundation that really help to provide financial assistance that many of our students so need and, and wouldn't be able to complete the program without that. But, but in addition to that, we have so many community partners that, that allocate and invest a tremendous amount of time uh, with our students and educating our students, hosting our students on their, their local farms, <clears throat> providing opportunities for them to complete essential skills uh, as they're navigating their way through the, through the learning process. <clears throat> uh, the countless hospitals uh, veterinarians and technicians that extend extraordinary externship opportunities uh, to our students uh, as they're completing the program and also providing support uh, to our distance education students for an entire three-year preceptorship as they go through the program. Uh, and, and, the, and the list just goes on and on and, and I know I'll leave someone off the list but you know partnering shelters um, animal adoption agencies, uh, our advisory committee, uh, just, just so many individuals that, that play a vital role in, again, making the program what it is today. So thank you all for the contributions that you've made to the program. Thank you all to the contributions that you're making to the profession. Uh, and I sincerely appreciate you attending this event today. I look forward to visiting with many of you uh, at the conclusion of the event and invite you to stick around uh, for those conversations, for photos. I know many of you are taking a tour uh, on the coattails of this as well. So thank you very much.